Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of James Dean Designs. Today I'm going to quickly talk you through some of the upgrades I made after building my enclosure just so you can see the ways to improve it. Let's get stuck in. So for anyone who watched the original enclosure video, at the end of it I started to mention modifications. I'd actually already started to make those modifications at the time of filming that last scene and it's those that I'm going to run through with you today. What I'll do is put a link up in the corner for the video and the plans in case you want to watch and download them as well, but I'll also put some links in the description to the different items I'm going to talk about in case you want to buy them. Now one of the things you'll see straight away is this orange laser shield behind me. Now I do bits of laser work with my 3018 Pro and one thing I'm very conscious of is the stray light can obviously damage your eyes. I'm not really a fan of the green glasses they provide with the lasers. One, I don't know what specifications they were made to and therefore how safe they are. But I also found that after I've been wearing them for a while, it started to distort my vision and it certainly threw off the colours. It was actually quite surreal and it takes a bit of time for my eyes to adjust afterwards after I've taken the glasses off. So I wanted something that was a bit more safer, such as this laser shield. The other thing I should mention, obviously that's green, that's orange. Lasers have different wavelengths and you need to find the suitable one for your laser. I happen to know the, uh, the orange colour is quite a broad spectrum and covers most of the lasers for the 3018 Pro, but do check before you buy one. The other thing is I wanted to be able to remove this laser shield when it wasn't in use so I could see the CNC running normally when it's milling. That's exactly what I did. I routed out a little edge around the window. I put a magnet on top of the shield. I also put a magnet on top of that window and it means I can just drop it back in and the magnet holds it in place for when the doors open and close in. So let's take a look inside to see what other modifications. And straight away you may have heard that bit of a clunk. That is the stay latch over here. Now when I first built it I didn't have anything to keep the lid open. I kept finding you know, it was hitting my head or I was having to prop it up with a stick or something. It just got a bit annoying. So I got one of these stay latches and they're the perfect accessory for something like this because it holds the lid up whilst you're trying to mess about and change something over. When you're ready, simply close it and it shuts. So definitely worth getting if you grow an enclosure like this with some sort of uplifting lid. Other thing you'll notice over here is there's a bit of a port on that side and then this hose coming down. Now when you build an enclosure typically it's to contain the noise and dust but I still wanted the facility to be able to extract that dust while the machine was running because if you're doing quite a long job obviously there's a big build up of dust and it does hinder the cutting process. So this is basically just a spare Dyson hose. Obviously they're springy and flexible, it's the perfect accessory for something like dust extraction within an enclosure. I already have a dust shoe which you may have seen on other episodes and this just connects perfectly to the top. Obviously as the x-axis is going back and forth, that simply goes back and forth with it. So it's a great little piece to add on to this build. The other thing, it kind of has a bit of a dual purpose. One obviously use it for extracting dust but if you're working with the laser you can either use it to extract the fumes as it's cutting or in reverse if you want to add a bit of an air assist you can use it to blow air back in and just assist when cutting or engraving. It's obviously not going to be as good as a proper air assist but any type of airflow whilst cutting with the laser always helps. Now the other thing you may notice these white strips around the outside is I started doing some upgrades with electronics. I did three different upgrades. One was adding lights Two was adding an extractor fan at the top and three was adding a fan to the control board to keep it cool. Now obviously I added lights partly because it looks cool but also to help me view things better when I'm working on the machine. I added the extractor fan because when the machine's running and again for long periods of time it generates heat and you want to extract that heat out to save everything getting too warm within the enclosure. So I can just turn that on for 10 minutes and get it to pull all the hot air out or for example, if there's fumes coming off the laser, again, you can just pull the fumes out of the enclosure as well. And then the fan for the control board, obviously the control board has lots of components that get very hot while they're processing. You wanna keep those cool as possible. So a fan just helps the airflow and again, keep everything cool. Now onto control boards. Most control boards for the 3018 Pro have a 12 volt output. 
and this is perfect for running accessories like this. You just need to make sure that your PSU or your power supply to the control board is rated high enough to take the different accessories. I've also made sure that they're all on different switches so I can control them separately. I may not want the lights on all the time whilst the fan's running for the control board. For example, if it's a long job again, I don't want the lights on while I'm not here because it's just going to use power that I don't need. But as I say, do check that your rating for your PSU is sufficient enough to take any different electrical additions for it. Now, the last accessory that I've finally got for my machine is a little webcam. Now, these just run on your home Wi-Fi. I think this particular one's called a Wi-Cam or something like that. They can be got from places like Banggood or AliExpress for dirt cheap. But they're also great because they have a wide angle view. And what this means, I can simply just drop it on the handle and it can record my machine as it's cutting. Now, obviously, if I'm going back in the house to get a drink or I'm leaving the machine for a while while it's cutting, that's when most of the accidents just always typically happen to go wrong. So something like this little camera is just brilliant because I can watch it on my phone whilst I'm doing something else and then come back if I need to and hit the stop button or just to change or, you know, when the job's done, I can easily see. So definitely a good accessory to get and a brilliant way to monitor your machine whilst you're not necessarily standing next to it. Now, as I say, those are just the modifications I've made, but if you've got anything you think could help me, then please do let me know in the comments below. I love chatting to everyone. If you enjoyed the video, as always, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It really does help out. But if not, I'll see you all in the next video.